All right, so check this out. This is a Heathkit AM radio. It's a GR10, and it's got this crazy mystery hole in it that I don't know what it is. So uh, let's take a closer look. Cleaned it up. It's pretty good. You can see there's some marks here. I may be able to get those off, but they didn't come off immediately with soap and water. Nothing much on the sides. Here's the back. Uh, I'm guessing that's for an antenna. Nothing much on the side. And underneath, also not much. When I bought this, I assumed that a tuner knob was missing. That would make this, you know, go back and forth. But actually, this does the tuning. And it more or less works. It gets a little tight and it wants to come off a little bit when uh, you get up towards the 12s and 14s. So like right there, it's really tight. Even when you try to look inside, like I don't see what it's connected to. So I don't know if something is missing or there's something else going on with this. And I got nothing. There's a very, very slight hum. I have already let it warm up and I've gotten nothing. So I'll open it up and hopefully I'll figure out uh, what's going on, why it's not working and what is with the mystery hole. These old radios are thought of as hot. Uh, because a lot of volts can pass through the frame and the other components. So if you're not sure what to do or how to do it, please do not. I removed two screws from here and here. And I've been able to start pushing this thing out. So it's going to come out really nice and easy. Here's the inside. You can see that there's some tubes. I'm thinking these must be tubes that are kind of shielded for some reason. There's even a little tube in there. Uh, I most likely will not be able to figure out what's going on here. Uh, I don't know anything about tubes. I don't know how to test them. Don't have a tube tester. Here's that hole. Um, I don't know if that's a transistor or a diode. I don't think it's like a light sensitive diode or something like that. I don't know what it is. So if you have any clue, let me know. I'm not sure if it's somehow tied into this thing. Interestingly enough, it looks like there could be a missing tube here, right here, the V450 C5. Uh, I believe that that's gonna be similar to what's underneath here and some of the other spots. So perhaps that's the issue. Quick look at the underside. Potentiometer for the volume, I guess a capacitor. So I do think there's a missing tube because right here, is where that tube is. So you can see there's four holes around it. And so when I flip this thing, you can see there's that missing tube. So the fact that there's actually some electronic components here, diodes or whatever those are, um, would suggest to me that there is supposed to be something here. So that may be the issue. Not sure if I'm gonna try to get a tube to replace it. I have to see what that might cost. Did a little bit of research and it looks like I could get a 50 C5 vintage tube that is for seven bucks though, another six for shipping, so that's 13 bucks. Supposedly this is uh, tested strong or superb testing. Not sure which is better, and I'm not sure if it's actually worth doing it because again, there could be all sorts of other things wrong with this thing. So I've gone and done it. I did buy a tube. So I'm gonna put this in and uh, pray. And I'm not a praying man. It was easy to put in place. I have it plugged in and here goes nothing. Oops, that's the tuner. Maybe I should. Oh, crap. Oh. Well, that's not good. Yeah, all right. So that's great. I do believe I just threw a $13 bill down the toilet. Not sure if you could hear that, but the station is coming in. So I did some research online, and it seems like the next thing to do would be looking at the capacitors. So they don't physically look that bad, but a guy switched out this one, and it worked much better. How many more dollars is that going to cost me? So I don't know if I'm going to try doing that or what. Uh, it's frustrating to keep chasing this thing. I ended up working with a colleague who uh, did test this capacitor and said that it was no good. And he was actually able to help me, or I should say he did, put these capacitors in as a replacement. Now it looks like obviously there's six capacitors there. That's because we had to kind of make up for uh, what was in here. So it turns out there's actually two capacitors in here. The red and the green wire reflect that. One was 80 MFDs at 150 volts. The other was 50 at 150 volts. 
So if you look at those capacitors, basically three of them add up to 150 volts, which was important. And uh, they're above that, the 80, I think they're microfarons or something like that. So now that those have been replaced, this thing actually is working. It does take a while to warm up. We had to move out of a house recently and we found some old plaques and stuff. The volume's actually pretty good. I may try to do an antenna to see if that helps get more stations, but it's nice to see this thing actually up and working. My friend did find the schematic, which is very helpful in figuring out what was going on. This is from the radiomuseum.org. So this thing is really in relatively good, kind of clean shape, and it's kind of neat. So I'm happy with how this turned out. Once I got into the electrical stuff, I didn't think I could fix it, but thankfully I had uh, a friend who was able to help me. The mystery of what that hole is still exists. If you happen to know, uh, please leave something in the comments because I'm sure it's something. So thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing or at least a thumbs up. Remember, thumbs up never hurt nobody.